Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining QMX Gold's Live Investment Summit today, hosted by SIX. Highly successful exploration in an excellent jurisdiction. I'm pleased to introduce our speakers today. On screen, you've got Brad Humphrey, Chief Executive Officer, President and Director. We also have Dr. Andreas Rompel, Vice President Exploration on the line, as well as Melanie Pichon, Exploration Manager. The team today is going to walk you through a company presentation, and after that, we will be taking questions in a live Q&A session. As a reminder, you can submit your questions in a right-hand side using the Q&A tab at any point during the presentation. Our deck today is also available in the handouts tab for you to download, as well as on qmxgold.ca under the events section of the website. Without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Brad to kick things off. Hi, thanks, Jane. And thanks to everyone taking the time to hear more about the QMX story. We wanted to also thank SIX for hosting this event. I'll start out with a brief overview, and then Andy and Melanie will take you through a more in-depth presentation on the geology of the region, QMX's targets, drilling in 2020, and our plans in 2021. So just to start, the first slide, I encourage everybody to read the forward-looking statements. We will be making a number of forward-looking comments, and this is very important disclosure. So what is QMX? QMX trades under the symbol QMX on TSX Venture Exchange. It's 100% focused on gold exploration in the Valdor mining camp in the Abbey Tibby uh, Greenstone Belt in Quebec, Canada. This is one of the best mining jurisdictions in the world, and it hosts multiple gold and base metal mines and continues to report uh, new discoveries. We control nearly 200 square kilometer land package right in the heart of the Valdor mining camp. We're located just to the east of the town of Valdor, which is a key mining center. We have El Dorado Gold's Lamac mine to the west of us, Probe Metals to the north, and O3 uh, mining to the south. We started drilling in mid-2017 and have, have rapidly moved our targets forward uh, with our most advanced project, Bonifon, reporting its maiden resource in mid-2019. And we recently released an interim update showing a material percentage increase at, at that project with the indicated resources increasing 53% and the inferred resources increasing 100%. Given we're in a highly prospective region with multiple historic operating mines on and around our property, we have a lot of targets and a full pipeline of uh, uh, targets for future drilling pro programs. QMX was a producer in the past, and as a result, we own a permitted mill and tailings facility. Uh, we do evaluate custom milling opportunities as they arise, uh, but our primary focus is on exploration. Earlier in 2020, we entered into an option agreement with O3 Mining where they have the option to acquire the mill and tailings along with the liabilities at any time over a six year term. And if the option is exercised, QMX will maintain access to its current throughput rate uh, at cost. So very much a win-win transaction for both QMX and O3. Over the years, QMX's systematic and methodical approach to its large land package and its highly prospective, uh, or uh, its highly prospective land package, has attracted a lot of corporate support. And as a result, we're fortunate enough to have most of our neighbors as shareholders, including El Dorado, O3, Osisco Gold Royalties, and Probe Metals. They're all very supportive shareholders. And Eric Sprott also participated in a financing we completed in March of this year. Before we get into the exploration details, here's some information on the stock. Uh, you know, there's a market cap comparison our, with most of our peers in the immediate area. Uh, we primarily trade on the Canadian exchanges, but we do have uh, listings elsewhere. And we do currently have research coverage from Mackey Research. This is our land package. Uh, for reference, our most advanced project is Bonifond. Bonifond is sort of in the middle of the project on the eastern side. You can see Bonifond deposit in the east zone. Uh, for your reference, our river target is way over on the western side, part way up. The distance between those two targets is approximately 16 kilometers. And then 
where we'll be drilling this winter at BevCon on the far east side. The distance between Bonifond and BevCon is approximately five kilometers. So uh, very large property uh, with gold showings all over the property. Our mill and tailings are located sort of in the, in the middle of the northern part called the Burlamac zone. And it's amongst the past producing mines, Dumont, Lacarban, and Furtiber. El Dorado's Lamac mine over here on the western side of our property, uh, 03 to the south, and you can see Probe's property there to the north of us. In 2017, we set out to prove uh, reinterpretation of the geologic model in on our property, which we have done successfully as our, our results really speak for themselves. We've completed more than 100,000 uh, meters since then. We've released a maiden resource uh, at Bonifond and recently announced that interim update uh, at Bonifond. And we've made discoveries and we've also expanded on known gold showings. So even though we've accomplished a lot in a very short period of time, we are still just scratching the surface on this property. I won't get into too much detail on this slide. It is my favorite slide in the slide deck. I'll leave it for Andy and Melanie uh, to get into the uh, exploration successes and where, we're, where our targets are. But you based, so we're the gold color. You can see all the success we've had all over the property. And, uh, you know, clearly Bonifant's been re reporting some significant successes and that's what's been driving our uh, resource growth at that project. So with that, I'd like to let Dr. Andy Rompel, our VP of Exploration, get into the geology and the Abitibi region in general. Thank you very much, Brad. And if you look at the next slide, you see where we are. We are in the Abitibi. The Abitibi is one of the best preserved greenstone belts. Its age is about 2.79 to 2.69 billion years ago. This is way before the dinosaurs existed. And it stretches from about east, uh, the, the west of Timmins to the east of Valdor, and it covers a big portion of Ontario and a big portion of Quebec. And as you can see on this map, the, the important features are these red lines. These are mega shear zones, which run more or less east-west. And you see many of the mines are actually located on these shear zones. This is our property, and um, if you can see, Valdor is here, and we're to the east of Valdor, and the east-west extension is about 25 kilometers, north-south about 15 kilometers. We have a huge land package, and it is in and around the Burlamark Bathalith, which is a very prominent feature. And if you see the dashed lines, the dashed black lines, these are the shear zones, and they seem to form around these bath layers, and the interaction between the shear zones and, and the intrusions is highly important. The, the knowledge of the structural geology is highly important to come up with your target selection. And again, you see some of these mines, they sit on the shear zones. This is a map with our current targets that we have had selected for 2020 and they will continue into 21. And you see river, you see Pullmark here, Bonfon, where we just have released a new, a new um, um, 43101 with a resource estimate. And there is Befcon on the side. And for further detail, I will pass on to our exploration manager in Valdor to Melanie Pichon. Hi, everybody. Um, so, let's see. So today I'm going to talk to you about uh, what we did in 2020, in 2020 uh, on Bonfond and what we're going to do in 2021 and more specifically the winter drilling program. Um, so we'll talk about, we're going to talk about the Bonfond uh, South Deposit and the updated resource we just published. Then we'll talk about the new loop deposit, uh, the Beth can mine, our winter exploration program and some other activities we have going on. So this is a location map of the eastern part of our camp that we call the East Zone. And what's important to see on that picture, 
as uh, several intrusive we are working on. So the bond for intrusive is on the northwest corner of the slide. Then uh, south east of east, we have the New Louvre intrusive and the biggest one is the Befkan intrusive that hosts the historic Befkan mine. So um, this is a bond for deposit. So it's a picture looking west and it's a current geological model of bond for. So there is a lot of things to see on that picture. Um, first of all, I'm going to try to draw if I can. Um, you can see here uh, the bond for intrusive. That's basically a large uh, tonalitic pipe. And then we have a series of shear zones um, ex starting in the volcanics and extended, extending that. Uh, through that, uh, through that intrusive, and the gold mineralization is hosted in those shear zones. Uh, in red on top of the picture, you can see the current open pit. So it contains the open pit uh, resource we just published. And then we also have, now we have some uh, resource underground. So if we check the resource update, so this is a new resource. What's important to see is that uh, we've increased the indicated by 50% and the inferred by, by 100%. So basically, we doubled uh, the indicated resource with, uh, with adding some, uh, with some underground resources. Uh, it's also important to note on the economic parameters that we are using realistic economic parameters for our resources. Uh, we are from a producer, so we know the costs of mining, mining, and all that stuff. So it's important to us that have, to have a strong resource, and that that is realistic. Um, these are some pictures of the new resource. So on the left side, you can see the geological model with the shear zones and the pit, and then two other slides are views of the pit and the underground uh, resource. So you can see where those resources are located. The pit is about three hundred thirty meter deep. Um, then the majority of the underground resource is located below the pit up to 500 meters down. And you can see the three blobs at depth that are running between uh, 700 and 1,000 meters deep, uh, which are basically our new exploration targets. So this is a core picture of what we intercepted at depth, uh, the famous hole uh, 121 that was, pub that was published uh, a few months ago. Uh, it was an exploration hole, and it, had, it intercepted some very interesting mineralization at depth uh, in the intrusive, and we are now drilling uh, that target. So now we're going to talk a bit about the new Louvre intrusive. So Bonfond is in the, on the northeast part of the slide, and uh, just a bit uh, south of it is a new Louvre intrusive. So it's a different kind of intrusive. Um, it's a diuretic one. And on this slide, you can see uh, the Bonfond pit. And in purple, at the bottom of the slide, is the current geological model of the Bonfond, of the New Louvre intrusive. So we drilled the New Louvre intrusive a bit in 2018 as a reconnaissance during program. And on the right corner of the slide, you can see some of the grades we intercepted. We haven't been working on it uh, since. And it's now a dream target for 2021. So for Bonfort and New Louvre, um, these are our targets for the winter. So in the black circle in the north of the picture is what we call the North Exploration Drilling Program, north of the uh, north of the Bonfort intrusive. So it was an exploration drilling uh, program that we conducted uh, during this fall. We just finished it. We are re waiting for the assay results. Currently, we are drilling south of the Bonfort intrusive and west of the New Louvre intrusive. Uh, we are basically searching for um, extensions uh, towards the west of the New Louvre deposit and uh, the shear zones of Bonfort. And then in the red circles are the targets for the winter. I can change. Um, sometimes people ask us a lot why we're not drilling on New Louvre and other targets 
uh, all year round. You, the, the reason is that everything that is east of the Bonfond deposit, so basically everything that uh, pink circle is swamp, the swamp area, so we can't access this. We can't access it uh, during the summer. We have to wait for the for the winter. So for this winter, we're gonna we're gonna drill um, the deep extension of the Bonfond intrusive and the extension of the shears. Um, towards the west, towards the east, sorry. We're going to drill the new loop intrusive, so to follow up on the results of 2018. And we're also going to do a lot of exploration um, in the swamp um, east of Bonfort. So currently, the drill holes that are permitted are close to 30,000 meters. We are not going to drill holes those holes. We are just making sure we have enough permits to run the winter drilling program. And now we're going to talk a bit about the Befkan intrusive and the Befkan uh, historic mine. So this is a long section of the Befkan uh, mine system. So we have two shafts, the Buffadison shaft. So we have the Buffadison shaft and the Befkan shaft, uh, Befkan being the main shaft. Um, the total depth of the mine is close to 650 meters. And all the red stars are uh, the 2018 uh, drilling program and some of the high grade zones we intercepted. Uh, the white stars are historical uh, drill holes. So basically what we know so far on the Befkan intrusive is that we have an historic mine that's hosted in shear zones in the northern margin of the intrusion uh, with mineralization known up to a thousand meters down with some historic drill holes and some holes we drilled in 2018. And we also know uh, we have a possible extension towards the west uh, with some of the, hole, the holes we did in 2018. And uh, we intercepted some high grade area. I think the best hole uh, would be the 15 in the middle of the screen with a 137 gram per ton over 3.7 meter. So really high grade uh, in quartz to marine vein or in shear zones. Um, then we are also running an exploration program on the western part of our project on what's called the Bolamek Batholith. Uh, the Bolamek Batholith is a huge, uh, a huge intrusive body. It's known to host several mines in the area. Uh, we control um, the further Bergemont urban mines. And currently, so we started with the river, uh, the river zone which is east-west of, uh, of those mines. Uh, we started with river because it was the easiest target on the Max. There, were, there was no mineralization. So we ran a short program in 2019, and we are currently running another exploration program. And in the same time, um, the project geologist who's running the program is running a full compilation and reinterpretation of the entire area to develop new exploration model. Um, a bit about what we are doing on the side, because exploration is not only about drilling. Um, so before we drill on a project, basically we go through an entire process, uh, which starts with database validation and compilation. We are in a very old mining camp, so we have a lot of data. So basically we reprocess all those data, make sure they're correct in our database. And then we compare this data with everything that's available. So the geology, the outcrops, the geophysics, the past geological models. Did somebody miss something? It's just an entire reinterpretation process. We reinterpret the structures, we reinterpret the geological model. Um, we try to rebuild new geological model. And then we would usually do a reconnaissance ring program or some more technical study doing more geophysics. Uh, do we need to do more field work, etc. Um, once we've run the first uh, exp exploration program, we would do project reevaluation. We want to do more drilling. Do we want just to stop that project? And then we will continue with uh, with more drilling. And if things run according to plan, we usually end up with a resource. And yeah, and I will uh, give. Uh, we let Brad finish. Yeah, so that was great, Melanie. Thank you, and thank you, Andy, uh, for those uh, your, your parts of the presentation. 
just before we wrap up, I wanted to quickly run through the mill. Um, you know, like I said, although custom milling isn't our primary business, it is a good business and having access to a permitted uh, tailings facility is a good thing. Um, so I just wanted to briefly touch on some of the details that we have at the Orbel Mill. Uh, so as I mentioned, it's located in the Burlamac uh, zone. It's roughly 15 or so kilometers from uh, east of Valdor, uh, mostly along paved highways, so very good access. Our mill can be configured in uh, any number of ways. Uh, currently, it's got crushing, grinding, flotation, gravity, and uh, leaching. Uh, but because it is a flotation mill and because it can be so customized, it does open us up to multiple different types of gold processing and base metal processing. Um, so there's a number of options there and we do evaluate uh, custom milling opportunities as they, uh, as they arise. But our, our primary focus is evaluating and, and exploring our uh, uh, very large pro uh, property. So we packed a lot in, uh, a lot of information into this presentation. Uh, so I just wanted to, you know, reiterate the investment case. It is fairly straightforward and simple. Basically a few key points. Uh, QMX is focused in one of the best jurisdictions in the world. Uh, and we control nearly 200 square kilometers right in the heart of the Valdor mining camp. QMX has reported repeated success all over the property, uh, including a rapidly growing uh, resource and our approach. So specifically our systematic and methodical approach, uh, and the results that we've put out to date have attracted a lot of corporate support, which, um, and, and particularly from our neighbors, which I think should add comfort to, uh, uh, to investors. And again, you know, we've accomplished a lot in a very short period of time, but given the size and the quality of our property, uh, and the you know, depth potential, for example, on the eastern side of Valdor that's relatively unexplored and we're showing you can hit very good grades at depth on the eastern side of our property. Uh, we are just scratching the surface at this project and uh, we're very excited uh, going into 2021 uh, to kick off that program that'll be focusing on the east side of uh, the, the east zone, just to the east of Bonifon. Okay, and with that, I'd like to... Uh, Thank everybody for taking the time to participate in the Sixth Summit, and uh, we'll now open it up for questions. And I will kick it off at just reading some of the, the questions on the side here as they come up. There was a question about uh, cost per meter. So in Valdor, it is um, uh, one of the least expensive places on the planet for exploration. Uh, you know. Drilling costs are around $110 a meter. If I take that even one step further and look at all flow through dollars spent and divide that through by all the meters drilled, it comes out to between $130 and $140 a meter. So our exploration dollars go a lot further in Valdor than they would in some of the other places uh, where you see people drilling, where it requires camps or helicopters or whatever. We are right next to a key mining center uh, in one of the best jurisdictions in the world. Now, there's a question here about how much money does QMX currently have and how much uh, do we need for 2021? So this is a, a good question. So right now we're sitting between about seven and a half and $8 million, uh, more than enough to complete the uh, 45,000 meters we have planned for 2020. 2020 and get us into the winter program in 2021. When you look at exploration companies, there's really two things to look at. There's the hard dollar balances and the flow through balances. On the hard dollar side, we're in great shape. And uh, we also have uh, a number of warrants that may come in to uh, be exercised next year that will also help on that hard dollar side. On the flow through side, um, when we put budgets together for drilling, uh, you know, Andy, Melanie, and I, and, and the team in Valdor sit down, and we have you know, a number of different budgets. We prioritize our targets that we'd like to drill. And when we get to that point when we're going to drill it, we see what the market conditions look like, what the opportunities are, what our balance sheet looks like. And that's when we move forward, uh, either with our you know, smaller budget, medium budget, big budget, whichever one uh, we happen to be 
uh, at at that particular time. And you know, any exploration company that tells you that they uh, aren't going to eventually need money, you know, they may be optimistic. We will continue to be opportunistic, looking at the market, looking at the shareholders that are interested. We're always our preferences for long term uh, strong holders and. Uh, you know, at some point next year, we will, you know, have to that we'll be looking at and we'll be uh, evaluating the market at that time. But right now, there's no uh, urgency uh, for that. Um, let me go on to the next one here. You know, there's some questions on MA. I really don't want to get too deep in uh, into that for, you know, obviously, I can't say what other companies are planning to do. I would suspect we're on a number of radar screens given the results we put out. It's been spectacular where we're located, the team we have on the ground in Valdor. Uh, all of those things are uh, you know, very good. Uh, from our perspective, we have a giant property with lots of targets on it. So we aren't necessarily out looking for something new. We do you know, evaluate things as they come up for sale, but it's not um, a high priority for us. Um, but that's just ongoing, uh, uh, part of the business. <laughs> when is QMX going to fly? Hopefully soon. Um, so what is the size for target and grade? So good question. Now, uh, because we have so many targets and they're different, you know, something like over in the Dumont, on the, on the Burlamac zone in the Dumont, Lacquer Bend, Furtaber area, uh, you could have something that's smaller on the ounces because it's much higher grade and relatively close to surface. It's already disturbed ground, depending on where it is, relatively close to our mill. Something like that could move forward pretty quickly. Uh, the open pit part of uh, Bonifant, I would say that it's, uh, it's met our targets. Uh, but we aren't going to move forward with any kind of uh, economic studies or development there until we know what the true scale is going to be, not only at depth, but also as we move to the east, maybe Bonifant is just part of something much on a much bigger uh, uh, project. You know, if New Louvre becomes uh, bigger or we, an intrusive to the east looks like Bonifant, then that would be what the Bonifant project would be. So we're still a ways off on, on something like that, but near surface, higher grade, that can move uh, uh, forward uh, relatively quickly. But we are, you know, make no mistake, we are an exploration company with multiple targets on a great project, a great property in a very highly prospective area. So uh, when I say we've just been scratching the surface, I, I truly, truly mean that. So there's a question about uh, how many warrants were exercised? Uh, so all, uh, pretty much all of the warrants that were, that were in the money that expired um, at the end of November were exercised. Uh, I, I, off the top of my head, I think it was 1.3 million, something uh, to that effect. We do have uh, about another three and a half million uh, dollars worth that would be in the money now um, uh, that expire in February and in June. So. From a hard dollar perspective, like I said, uh, we're in great shape uh, from that perspective. And most of those, if you go back through the old financings, are in in, in a few hands. So um, I do think that those will all be uh, exercised when before they uh, expire. So I, there's a question on consolidation, and I get this uh, uh, frequently. So um, my background is in equity research. And uh, I've looked at consolidations and done lots of research on consolidations. And that my personal view is, unless you're trading at four cents and have a billion shares outstanding, um, you only do a consolidation on some kind of company changing event. And, uh, and usually you try to follow that up with some supportive type transaction afterwards. Uh, you know, with our share count right now, it's about 390 million shares outstanding. Roughly 50% of it's locked up between our strategics and a few very high net worth that are almost at 10% um, individuals. 
Uh, so our float is really just half of our, our shares of standing. Um, so as of right now, it's not something that we are currently looking at. Of course, we always are opportunistic. We're always going to be valuing everything. And um, but as of right now, that's not something that uh, I would uh, uh, see us doing anytime soon. And uh, so there's a good question on COVID um, and how it's affected uh, QMX. I, I think what I'll do is maybe I'll open up the Q&A period uh, section here to uh, allow Melanie to jump in since she's the the one on the ground in, in Val d'Or. Here in Toronto, um, you know, mining executives, we work remotely a lot of the time. So it really wasn't that big of an impact for us. The back office side of the business uh, very quickly and efficiently moved remote and uh, it's worked very well uh, in, the, in Toronto. But where the operations are happening uh, in Val d'Or, I'll let uh, Melanie uh, answer that part. So regarding COVID, uh, when COVID came, the good thing is that we knew confinement was coming, so we had the time to prepare for it. Um, it came at the end of the winter drilling season, so we were able to finish the majority of the winter program. Uh, the only hole we were not able to drill were really exploration holes that were not needed to update the resource or that were not uh, really necessary to to run the, the rest of the year. Um, we use the confinement to work on data validation and target generation. So we managed to keep the team busy and it, it was actually kind of very, the confinement was useful. It gave us the time to uh, look at the project, take a step back, uh, do more compilation, do all those things we don't have the time to do when we're drilling. So we came out of confinement with uh, drilling targets ready and ready to move back to, to operation. Um, so we had some delays, of course, and we still see some delays uh, because now all companies have to work with uh, social distance and stuff like that. Uh, here in Valdo, we are very lucky. We are in a remote area, so we don't have a lot of uh, COVID cases. So everything is running. Uh, regarding the day-to-day -day operations, um, we just we just have to be careful and follow uh, health. Um, health regulations so in the office it's uh, social distancing and wear your mask and uh everything is everything is running smoothly we just see some delays uh, mostly with our contractors who are located in big cities and some uh, some consulting companies but other than that covid hasn't affected us uh, so much perfect thank you uh thank you melanie um we're also very lucky when the original property package was put together in uh, 2003, 2004, a large portion of the ground was acquired from ore resources. And as part of that, uh, the ore resources exploration office, which is where Melanie's sitting right now, uh, it's quite large and, you know, we have a relatively um, modest team. So there is quite a bit of space. So the social distancing part is something that we can uh, do quite effectively there. So uh, it's a question, what are the benefits of being in Val d'Or? So, you know, I, I can't say it enough. Uh, it's one of the best places to operate as an exploration company uh, that I've ever seen. Any kind of uh, equipment, consultants, contractors, uh, you name it, uh, it's there. It's a major mining center in the region. And, uh, you know, on top of that, we don't require camps for our exploration teams. We don't require helicopters to get our drills into place. Uh, access is very good. It's easy for us to get in and out of Valdor. Um, you know, pre-COVID, there was uh, flights going up from Montreal. And even beyond that, if we want, we can drive from Toronto. It's not a, not a difficult drive. So uh, great spot to be. Uh, relatively inexpensive drilling, as I mentioned in, in the earlier questions. Um, and, you know, also being surrounded by a number of companies that are doing great work. Uh, it helps us get up the learning curve really quickly. And that's why even though we started a little later than everybody else, we've been rapidly closing the, the uh, gap between where they're sitting and where we are uh, because, you know, great talent pool uh, located right there in Valdor. 
So there's a question about uh, upcoming event, uh, upcoming catalysts. So the, um, you know, we're completing a very large drill program. Uh, there are, we are pending assay results on a number of our targets. Uh, we have another very large program starting this winter on some very prospective targets that if you go back to that slide, I said was my favorite slide, uh, you can see the results that we got from those uh, targets when we drilled on them in the past. Uh, so I think those, the results from that will be very, uh, will be catalysts. There will be um, anything that we prove to the east, uh, or anything we discover to the east of Bonifond, uh, you know, should be a big catalyst because you can show that, okay, Bonifond is this, it's growing at depth, and now there's something just to the, you know, southeast that looks similar, you know, whatever it happens to be, uh, you can start to see how this could rapidly grow into something even larger. Um, so I would say that would be a catalyst. Timing assay results, um, very challenging right now. Uh, we did add a second lab for part of our uh, part of our uh, projects. Uh, part of the delay was we were sending in, you know, we're not sending in 10 meters for assay. We're sending in thousand meter assays, uh, samples for assay. So we were causing part of that delay. So we moved our other projects onto a different lab uh, to reduce that. But everybody's up, all the producers are updating their resources right now uh, for year end. There is a number of large drill programs happening all around us, including our own. And, um, you know, we saw delays like this back in 2017 when we first started drilling. And uh, the results eventually come. We're still drilling. We're not taking, uh, there's no, none of our, we have enough targets that we don't have to do anything that's sort of results dependent. And if it is results dependent, we can move on to the next target, start drilling that one while we're waiting for the results. So it doesn't hurt us operational wise, but it, uh, you know, obviously we're all anxious to see uh, the results and uh, they will come. And it's just uh, hard to say exactly uh, when that would be, but those will all be catalysts that'll be coming uh, over the next uh, few months. Yeah, so um, there's a question that sort of relates to uh, what, what are our thoughts on the interim update at uh, Bonifont? And, um, you know, we'd always been saying it's going to be a material percentage increase. Uh, it was, you know, inferred went, or inferred went up 100%, indicated went up 53%. Uh, those are, are pretty meaningful uh, jumps. Uh, for me personally, the first of so the maiden resource, we just wanted to prove that you could build an economic pit shell at Bonifont because we've been doing all this drilling and that's sort of your, you know, report card at the end. Yes, it's economic. These are the, we use very conservative parameters. You can look them up on the press release and the, the full study will be out in January. Um, you know, we're very realistic. Like Melanie said, we used to be producers. We know what it costs for milling. We know what it costs for transport. We know what milling costs are. Very realistic. It's based on a 1450 gold price. Again, uh, certainly not uh, overly uh, aggressive. And um, this interim update for me, I knew we were going to grow the in pit, obviously, uh, you've seen the results. But for me, what was important was, can we put economic parameters around an underground resource? Because if we can do that, we have a zone from 350 meter depth down to at least a thousand meter depth. And we're in the Abitibi, uh, mines go down much deeper than a thousand meters. So that was what I was most anxious to see and uh, very happy to see that it uh, that hangs together and can be an economic parameters can be put around it to mine it from underground and uh, that's where we'll be continuing to to focus there so yeah we we're very happy with that and uh we're going to continue i mean you use these sort of interim updates uh as you know should we continue to deploy capital there and i absolutely think uh that's the case uh here and who knows what is around it now that we can start drilling the eastern side as it gets colder uh in valdor So I just, uh, you know, another question sort of uh, continues on from what uh, I just said. So do you expect the grades at depth uh, to be economical? So absolutely, uh, I do. Uh, you know, we've shown that um, at the very bottom of that 
deep hole we put out in August, it was 35 grams over four meters. So if we can show that that continu is continuous, it's, it's one hole. So we can show that's continuous. Absolutely, that'd be economic at depth. Um, and we've got another uh, several holes that are either at the labs, in process, uh, or planned. And we'll be wedging off of those holes uh, to also fill out that, uh, to follow up on the, uh, the drilling we're doing at depth. So uh, we wouldn't be doing it if we didn't think it was economic. We have lots of targets. So if we're sticking with a target, it means that we absolutely think it's going to grow and uh, be economic. We, we're not, we have a, a lot of targets. We're not, we don't, aren't forced to make something work. We uh, we're uh, very excited. Okay. And that looks like uh, about it on the Q and a that we haven't already answered. You know, there's uh, yeah, like I said, there's some M and A questions, but you know, we really can't comment on what other companies would do. I would say that we're in a pretty good position where we've got uh, multiple corporates, so um, it's not like one is is necessarily controlling the the outcome if uh, something was to happen. So that's uh, puts us in a pretty favorable position as well. Um, but with that, I think uh, I'll pass it back to uh, Jane uh, to do any, any of the closing uh, uh, remarks. Great. Well, thank you very much, Brad. And I'd also like to thank Dr. Andres and uh, Melanie for taking us through the presentation and of course, answering all the audience's questions in detail. I also wanna thank everyone in the audience who submitted questions. If you just thought of a question now, or if you think of one even after the closing of our event today, please stick around. We have a short survey that you can leave your details so that the QMX Gold team can reach out to you directly and uh, do any follow-up ups uh, that's necessary. You can also find more information on their website listed here on the slide at www.qmxgold.ca. And as we mentioned, uh, the deck today can be downloadable there uh, on the website under the events section. Now, Brad, uh, I'll hand it back to you for the final word. Yeah, so that there's, uh, you know, just I'll just end with one last uh, Q&A question. Sorry, it just came in. Uh, we do get asked a lot about the Forbes and Manhattan group. Um, so way back in, you know, 20 or 2003, 2004, the company QMX was called Alexis Minerals, the predecessor company. Uh, the land package was put together with the support of a group called uh, Forbes and Manhattan. Uh, they're more focused on, you know, development and production. So, you know, they put lacquer ban into production. They started building or developing a mine in Manitoba, you know, tough economic times, uh, ended up coming back to this property that's now in QMX. And uh, when I joined in 2016, uh, we refocused the company as an exploration company. And um, as part of that, we really weren't a core focus for the Forbes Manhattan group. And we have since uh, had no longer have any ties with them. Uh, we just, you know, made more sense for us to be standalone. And uh, we were no longer, you know, one of their, you know, core competencies, which is development and, and production. So that answers that last, uh, last question there. But thank you everybody for uh, joining in and uh, we will be in, stay tuned. All right. Thanks everyone. Until next time. Bye now. <laughs>